Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, take off, or take off, take off with the Milvis Cessna 310. So we're here at Brunswick Gold Niles, and we're going to do this in the following order. We're going to do normal takeoff first, then we'll cover short and soft field takeoff, then we'll do the crosswind takeoff. Now, unlike with the A2A172 tutorial, we have an extra bit that I'm going to cover for takeoff. We're going to cover, um, balked, what I like to call balked takeoff, so single engine both before so an engine failure both before you rotate and after you rotate um small VA, ga planes like this don't necessarily have a v1 speed like a bigger jet does um v1 is essentially rotation speed in this plane so red line there is commitment speed basically we start rotating at about red line you can think of red line as v1 so if your engine fails and you are taking off uh, and you're above red line, you take the problem into the air. If you are below red line, you could, and still on the ground, you can uh, actually just land it, or, or just abort the takeoff. Um, you, could you actually, if the engine fails after takeoff and you're just off of the ground, could you land it back on the ground if you have sufficient runway available? Yeah. Uh, I don't recommend it. Once the wheels leave the ground, I tend to like to take any problems I might have into the air because, and you'll see why when we do that bit, um, uh, engine failure creates so much drag, you're going to have so hard a time controlling the plane that I would not even try to put it back on the ground. I would just take it in the air. It's easier to take it in the air than it is to risk putting it back on the ground. But we'll talk about that more when we get there. All right, so let's cover takeoff. We just finished the run-up, and we got to run through the takeoff checklist now. So takeoff checklist... Um, this is more of a walkthrough of what's going to happen on takeoff. Again, normal takeoff, we're doing the normal takeoff checklist. Short and soft field, we'll do the max performance takeoff checklist, but this one, normal takeoff. So, power will be full, 2700 RPM. Uh, we'll basically just hit full throttle. Mixtures, full, rich. Um, you would lean for field operations, but full rich for today because we're at, a, we're at a field that's basically sea level, so if the field's above 3,000, you'd have to lean that for best power, but we'll, um, we can use full rich. Engine instruments, we would check them, make sure they're in the green as we take off. Minimum control airspeed is red line of 80 knots. Elevator control, raised nose wheel at 83 knots, so lift off at 92 knots. So basically, what it's saying is, once the speed hits red line, we start pulling back on the yoke, and we should get airborne right around 90 knots. So the way this is going to work is, uh, let me set heading bug to runway heading real quick. We will rotate at red line. Actually, I, I like to start rotating about 85, which is above red line. And about 85, we'll start slowly and smoothly pulling back on the yoke. Should get airborne right around 95 knots. Uh, we want to pitch to maintain blue line plus 10. Uh, you want blue line plus 10 because blue line is your minimum climb speed on a single engine. So if the engine fails after takeoff, you need to be above blue line in order to climb. Uh, and the reason I say plus 10 is because if the engine failed after you got airborne, you're going to have a hard time getting it under control and the amount of drag that's going to happen once you get it under control is uh, probably going to slow you down a decent amount so you'll have a 10 knot buffer window between that and blue line so we want to climb out at blue line plus 10 which is about 115 knots on this plane so again we'll rotate 85 90 get airborne 95 to 100 and climb out at about 115 so that's the plan uh, flaps not required for this takeoff. We're going to go ahead and turn the strobe lights on and the landing lights on. And I see that uh, traffic is on a two mile final now. So we will hold for him. Once we get airborne, we can shut off the fuel pumps, by the way. Okay, traffic pattern at this airport is a thousand feet for this airplane. Hold short of this line and wait on that traffic to land. He's on uh, one mile out now. He's on a short final. Don't see any 
anyone else on the runway, and I don't think anyone's behind us. Take this opportunity to look everything over, because this is your last chance. What we got here? Looks like a Learjet. Nice touchdown, buddy. Okay, as soon as he clears the runway, we can take off. a decent amount of uh, left turn tendency on takeoff, so be ready for it. Alright, we're going to line up, give it full throttle. And that rudder trim is definitely helping out. The planes that want to stay relatively centered. There's 90 rotating. Airborne. Fly them out at blue line. Gonna bring the gear up. And when do you bring the gear up? Um, I like to bring gear up just below blue line. That way we get rid of all that drag. Again, I don't like to try to land on the remaining runway if the engine fails, so there's no point in waiting until you're unable to land on the remaining runway. Alright, there is a thousand feet. We're going to go ahead and start our left turn. Remember that rudder trim we have in there, so we're going to have to get a little bit of extra rudder here. We're going to bring the props back by bringing throttle back first, set that to 25. And then we're going to bring our BM back to 25 as well. Alrighty. And we want to maintain roughly 120 knots for now. Actually, we're above 1,000 feet, so we can accelerate to 130 to 140 knots cruise climb speed. There's 2,000 feet. I'm going to roll wings level real quick. And we're going to bring out that aileron trim since we don't need it anymore. Alright, that is the normal takeoff. Let's do short field. Alrighty, so we are here at Folkestone's Davis Field. A uh, nice little runway to do our short field operations on. So. Let's talk short field ops in this aircraft. Could this airplane operate here? This is a 2,500 foot runway. So could this airplane operate at a, a airstrip that's only 2,500 feet long? Yes. Could it do it safely? Not really. And I'll tell you why. Um, there's two things you got to worry about on takeoff with this plane as far as pre-flight and checking distance. There's the takeoff distance for both normal and maximum performance. Like, Again, since we're doing short field, we want maximum performance. So, with our weight today, we're at 5,500 pounds. If we took off at, if we rotate at 82, this airfield is at sea level. Outside air temperature, uh, where is that thing? Uh, OAT, where is OAT? This plane's got an OAT gauge somewhere. Is it on the right side? Yes. 
Outside air temperature, we're looking at about 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So 60 degrees outside air temperature. Uh, let's see. And that is in Celsius, right? Yes. Or was it? I could. Uh, it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so, right here. It would take us 1,290 feet on this takeoff. We need 1,650 feet to clear the 50 foot obstacle. This runway is only 2,500 feet long. It's 2,500 minus the 1,650. That gives us 850 feet of leftover runway. Now, Note that, 850 feet of leftover runway. I always like to round up to the next highest 100 to give me some extra room. But uh, the next thing we need to note is accelerated stop distance. So, if you have an engine failure below VR, if you're still on the ground and the engine dies, you have to stop the airplane on the runway. How much room are you going to take up? So this is what the accelerated stop is. From takeoff speed, how long does it take you to stop? And to read this chart, same weight, engine failure speed 92 knots, sea level airport, 50 degrees outside air temperature, or 60 degrees, we need an additional 4,120 feet. That's how long the runway is going to have to be in order for us to both take off, hit the 92 knots, then stop. We only have 850 feet additional, and we would need an addition. So basically, we're going to need an additional um, 3,000 feet, or about 2,000 feet, to bring the aircraft to a stop. We only have 850 left over once we hit takeoff speed. So yeah, could we safely operate here? Not really, because this run, we're committed to takeoff, basically, as soon as our engines hit the floor. As soon as we go full throttle, we are committed to takeoff, so pray we don't have an engine failure here. Alright, we're going to go back to the checklist, and we're going to run the um, checklist for maximum performance takeoff. Let me find it. Okay, maximum performance takeoff. Again, I'm going to give it about 4% nose right aileron trim, which is 4 clicks on the mouse wheel. Wing flaps, 15. We'll set them. Wing flaps, mixture set for best power. Uh, we'll have throttle full. We'll hold the brakes. Once we um, see the engines are good, we will release the brakes. Rotate at 80 knots. So we're actually going to rotate below red line on this road takeoff. We want to get airborne as quickly as possible. So one thing I forgot to do on the last takeoff is set the transponder to altitude. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get it on the runway and take off. So we're going to need to use our brakes to line us up on the runway, using up as little as possible. You can also use the engine, so I'm going to decrease the power on the right engine. Let the left engine push us. Assist it with the differential brakes. Not the best lineup in the world, but it's close enough for government work. Alright, so we're going to hold the brakes. Everything is good. We are ready to take off. So again, we're going to rotate at 80 knots in this one. Uh, maximum performance takeoff. We rotate at 80 knots. We want to get airborne as quickly as possible. As soon as we see positive rate on the altimeter, not the VSI, the altimeter, we raise the gear. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 400. So 500 feet on the altimeter is a safe altitude to make turns. Uh, okay. And say 900 is good for 700. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to give it full throttle. Check our engines. They're good. Release the brakes. Keep it as close to the center line as you can. 80 knots. Rotate and don't be sissy with the rotation. Really pull on it. Positive brake. Gear up. Clearing the 50 foot obstacle, now we pitch down. We're passing 400 feet, flaps up. There's blue line. 
Pitch up to maintain blue line, plus 10, at least. Okay, I'm a little off the runway extended center line, but that'd be okay. Alright, we pitch down, we're gonna throttle back again, back to 25, and then RPM back to 25 as well. Pitch down to maintain that uh, at least 115 knots. We want to go about 130 knots for cruise climb. And we'll depart the area to the north. That is the short field takeoff. Let's do the soft now. Alright, we are here at Hilliard Air Park and we are almost ready for takeoff. So real quick, we're just going to run through maximum performance takeoff checklist again. And, you know, same rules apply. Um, you'd want to check both um, takeoff distance and accelerated stop distance. Alright, so maximum performance takeoff checklist. Wing flaps down. Brakes will be set. Throttle full. Mixture lean. Brakes release. Check 27. All that. So, okay. This is very, very similar to the short field takeoff, but we don't have to worry about an obstacle. So what we're going to do for soft field is we're going to rotate as soon as possible then we're going to fly over the runway, building up speed till we get about 100 knots or just below blue line. Then we're going to pitch up. Do not worry about the landing gear until we are at least 200 feet above the field elevation. So the best way to do that is just to show you. So I'm going to hold the brakes, flap set, full throttle. Engines are good, releasing the brakes. Keep it lined up. I'm going to give it back pressure to keep weight off the nose wheel. It's going to get airborne really soon with the back pressure. Right there, red line. There it goes. We're going to fly just above the runway. Keep the gear down for now. There's 100 knots. We're going to pitch up. There's 200 feet above the field. I bring the gear up. There's 400 feet. There's blue line flaps up. Maintain 115 or greater on the climb out. There's a thousand feet. We're gonna throttle back. So throttle back to 25, RPM back to 25. And that is the soft field takeoff. So now we pitch down to maintain about 130 knots for cruise climb and turn on course. Alright, next let's do crosswind. That's a fun one. Alright, real quick before we do crosswind, I just want to show you what type of winds we're dealing with. The nose of the plane is aligned with runway heading, and we have basically a 90 degree crosswind. So, yeah, that's the winds we're going to be dealing with for this takeoff. Alrighty, so how do we do crosswind takeoffs? First, we set the heading bug to runway heading. Actually, let's set the heading bug to the wind which is out of the north, basically. And we'll set the CDI to runway heading. There we go. So crosswind correction, just like before when taxiing, you turn towards, if, it, if it's a headwind, turn towards. If it's a tailwind, dive away from. Uh, it's gonna be a slight headwind, mostly crosswind, but slightly on the head, so we'll have full left aileron when we start, and as we accelerate, we'll slowly bring out that aileron to the point when we rotate, we want it to be right about there. Once we get airborne, the plane's going to naturally want a weather vane into the wind. We can bring it out, and we'll put it in a crab, just like, just like with any other takeoff. Alright, so we're going to select runway 7. Oops, runway 7. 
and announce takeoff. We'll just say straight out this time. Golden Mile traffic, Cessna November 310, Bravo Victor taking All right. off runway 7. Again, out rudder trim at 4% to the right. Turn us into the wind. Now we're going to need the crosswind correction as we taxi too, so we're turning towards right now. Watch the heading bug. Heading bug indicates wind direction. Turning towards it. It's going to be a headwind again as we turn onto the runway, but we're we'll be going the other direction. Alright, so now turn towards it this way. And we are ready for takeoff. So, here we go. I'm just going to give it full. It's a normal takeoff, by the way, so we've done our normal takeoff checks. Use rudder to keep yourself aligned on the runway. As we accelerate, I'm bringing out that, that aileron. To the point when we rotate, and I bring it just a little bit. You might want to delay rotation to a faster airspeed, say about 90 knots. Then we'll crab into the wind once we're airborne. We've got a positive rate, so gear's coming up. not a good idea to combine max performance with crosswind sometimes you're really gonna look into that one and and just like with any other airplane you combine crosswind technique with whichever kind of takeoff you're doing at the time all right so that was crosswind next we'll talk the emergencies all right back here at golden isles i've killed the wind now we're going to talk the two types of emergencies you have to deal with on takeoff uh, both of which involve an engine failure. There is engine failure before you get airborne and engine failure after you get airborne. All right, so what do you do different with each? Well, before, if engine fails below red line and you're still on the ground, bring the aircraft to a stop on the runway. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the uh, airplane up to have an engine failure at takeoff. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna hit push the E key and then hit one. So E one, and that means that if I hit Control F two, you see it's only doing with the engine, with the left engine right now, engine one. What I'm gonna do is when I hit Redline, I'm gonna hit Control Shift F one, which is gonna kill the left engine. So at Redline, I will kill the left engine, and you're gonna see just how much drag and and all is produced when the left engine dies. And you'll see right away why it's not a good idea to try to land on the runway if you're already airborne. Alright, so we're going to get in position to take off. Normal takeoff, um, you would yeah, combine this with uh, whatever takeoff you're doing at the time. Pray to God that engine failure don't happen on takeoff though. Alright, so this is before we get airborne. There's two speeds we need to note, red line and blue line. Red line is minimum control airspeed on a single engine, and blue line is minimum climb speed on a single engine. Right now, we're just worried about red line. Get lined up. All right, I'm gonna give it full throttle, and at red line, I'm gonna kill the left engine. All right, so we're taking off, not expecting an engine failure. Approaching red line. Left engine is dead. Immediately kill the throttle. Use aileron to keep yourself on the runway, give it maximum braking. 
come to a complete stop on the runway. We can assess the situation in there. Complete stop on the runway. Check and make sure the engine has just died. Engine died, there's no fire, so we don't need to shut and evacuate. Uh, that's the first thing you check. Immediately come to a stop on the runway and check and make sure nothing's on fire. Uh, if it died because of the darn thing burst into flames, that would be a problem. And uh, if it did burst into flames and you need to evacuate, what you would do is just quickly kill the other engine, shut off the battery, and just get the hell out of the plane. Okay, but you, you saw that there, just how how much turn it had when it uh when it rotated. The engine died right about here. We ate up an additional thousand feet of the runway, essentially. About fifteen hundred feet, looking at it. Almost fifteen hundred feet extra ate up on the runway to come to a stop. And look how far off center line we were. We were on center line when the engine died. So yeah, you see that. Now imagine trying to take that and you're already airborne and trying to land on the remaining runway. It just ain't gonna happen. All right, we're gonna break. We're gonna start the engine back up. All right, now what about engine failure after you're airborne? Remember I said a lot of delay speed or rotation till 90 knots and you're about to see why. Uh, we're going to fail the engine this time when we get about 200 feet above the ground. So it's going to be a normal takeoff to that point. Now what's going to happen is the airplane's going to want to... It's going to be really hard to control. I'm going to give it bank and full right rudder. You want rudder in on the live engine. Is that live engine. Don't reduce power because you're going to need all the power that you can muster. All right. Also, you're going to want to feather the failed engine as soon as possible. If you have a controller for that, do it. All right, so full throttle. Rotate at 90 knots. Climb out just above blue line. Raise gear at positive rate, just like we did on normal takeoff. There's red line. 90 knots. Rotate. Airborne. There's blue line. Pause the brake gear up. Left engine has died. Immediately right rudder and feather the left prop. Left prop has been feathered. I'm going to pitch it down to keep up the speed. I want that speed on blue line. I'm giving it as much rudder as I think I need to keep the plane yeah I don't I want to minimize any amount of drag I can so I want to keep that ball centered as best I can with the rudder do not climb too fast you got to keep the speed above blue line at all costs I'm going to reduce power just a little bit on the right engine Alright, but you see here, we are above blue line, and we are climbing. The aircraft is perfectly under control, but look how long it took me to get that the aircraft under control and in a steady climb. And look at how much rudder I'm having to put in, and yoke I'm having to put in to keep the airplane controlled. So do you really want to be fighting with that and trying to land on the remaining runway? No, you don't. Alright, now, so we can climb here slowly. We can muster maybe about 300 feet per minute with a climb. Try to keep the plane as coordinated as possible. Don't be afraid to use rudder trim. Because the more coordinated the are, you are, the less drag you will have. The less drag, the faster you can get. And you want speed when you're running off a single engine. Alright, so at this point we would want to turn the airplane around and get it back on the ground. Any runway will work, okay? Don't worry about don't worry about which runway is favorable. If the wind's calm, just take any runway. The wind's calm today. Look, we can climb, we can maintain altitude. 
so we ain't got to worry about. We have the airplane com perfectly under control, even though we're only running off one engine. Now that is where having a controller for the prop will help you out, because you can feather it a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna get us in to land on the runway we took off on. Increase power a bit. Okay, as far as landing with a single engine, we'll cover that in the landing video, but that was the takeoff video. We covered full takeoff, uh, normal takeoff, short field, soft field, crosswind, and we covered uh, engine failure during and after takeoff. So. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.